Chris. <laughs> A-Hole Productions. Resident Evil. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Nemeseek, and I'm just about to record my Spider-Man review, actually, here in a minute, and I wanted to get this out there because... We got the box office numbers. I mean, I've been keeping an eye on this. I was going to do a video on the opening weekend, but then I was like, well, the opening weekend was so poor that I thought, well, we'll wait a couple weeks and see what happens. And now that I've seen Spider-Man, and I'm pretty sure that's going to do really well this weekend, I'm, I'm guessing for Sony, I figured, all right, well, we can do this back to back where I could talk about something positively that Sony did on my main channel with Spider-Man. And then here we can start wrapping this show up um, and talk about uh, something that we kind of started following when this show started, which was the development uh, and filming of this movie, Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City. And the box office numbers are abysmal. Um, now, I know most Resident Evil movies, they're not gangbusters. They don't make a ton of money. But when they release in other countries, they've had successes outside of the U.S. And that's what caused the Paul Anderson movies to continue to keep going all the way up to the sixth film. And even though the sixth one didn't do that well, uh, considering its budget and, you know, what it made worldwide, it didn't do awful either. I mean, it certainly didn't warrant another one. But luckily, that was already called the final chapter, so it didn't look like Dan plans to make another one anyway. So with this reboot, I think some of us who are a little bit more optimistic, even when we saw things that we might have been critical of, we were still hoping for the best that we could get a, a solid Resident Evil adaptation. And I'm of the mindset now where I think that's almost impossible. <laughs> I think I think pretty much uh, you either you either need to do something like the Paul Anderson movies, where it's just they pick a genre, you know, action, over the top action. Um, and just go crazy with it and not take itself too seriously and just do something like that. Um, or you find someone who's really good at making like, you know, small, uh, you know, intimate horror films, um, you know, like a James Wan or someone and you get him to do something. And I think he was attached to this at one point and then, you know, got slipped away. So like both George Romero, I, you know, at one point was going to make Resident Evil and James Wan. And I don't know if they would have done better. But uh, I don't know. It's hard to think they would do worse <laughs> than what this is. And I've read the George Romero script. It wasn't great, um, but I think I probably would have rather seen that movie made than Welcome to Raccoon City now that I've seen it. So you guys know my thoughts on this. And for the the episode 100, for our, uh, probably our final episode on this channel, um, I'll, I'll see if I can still come up with other things to put on this channel at some point. But at least for now, I'm not going to be posting any content anytime soon on this channel after episode 100 and I think in that episode I'll probably film it in like a week or two you know around Christmas and uh, and what I'll do is I'll read your comments that you guys have been leaving on my review episode and I'll read those comments and respond to them and we'll kind of make the last episode something a little bit more um, and that involves you all and your opinions so if you want to squeeze in you know your thoughts real quick go back to episode 98 my spoiler review and post your thoughts there, and I'll try to, you know, get an episode up um, between Christmas and the end of the year, you know, somewhere around there. Um, and then for a while, you won't, you probably won't see any content on this channel. So I appreciate you for subscribing. I really do. Um, but I just, I have a lot going on, and, and, and I'm supposed to rest more with my health and stuff. So I have to cut back on things, and one of the things I have to sacrifice is this channel, most likely. But I will try to still put some gaming stuff on here from time to time if, uh, if I'm able to. Um, so we'll see, but I'm not, I'm just not making any promises. So, uh, so yes, yeah, so this movie, it did pretty bad opening weekend. It made $5 million, $5.3 million domestically in the U S. Um, and then a couple more million outside the U S I think for a total of a, like a 11 or 12 or maybe even $13 million opening weekend worldwide. And remember this came out a couple days early. So it wasn't like uh, this was a three day weekend number. This was like a five day <laughs> weekend number. So it basically made a million dollars a day roughly from Wednesday to Sunday, which is just awful. It's just not good. Um, the rated R one hour, 47 minute Welcome to Raccoon City action sci-fi horror movie uh, just didn't seem to land with a lot of people. I think, uh, I think the trailer didn't do enough to pull people in especially during the pandemic i think they were like look we'll go see something big and massive like spider-man probably uh because they the theater i went to was packed uh the theater for res evil when i went was not packed um and so so this movie i think already at the at the jump was um you know didn't pull people in with those trailers like like of course fans we all argue online all the time whether we love something or hate something passionately whatever 
but it really doesn't matter. Like we are such a small percentage of what movies need for success. They need people who aren't like us. They need the masses. And this movie clearly didn't bring any of them to the movie theater. This a $13 million opening weekend worldwide is, is like, that's fans only almost. And probably even a few non-fans or a few people who maybe have heard of Resident Evil or seen the previous movies um, and wanted to see a reboot. But this, that is, or just were excited to get out of the house or something. But it did not pull people out of their homes uh, during a pandemic to go see it. Uh, and I don't even know if it would have done much better pre-pandemic, to be honest with you. Because I think word of mouth on this movie spread pretty quickly, um, much like the T-virus. Uh, this movie, it, it opened in France, Spain, United Kingdom, other places around the world. And in most of those countries, didn't even hit a million dollars in most of those countries. Some of them they did. Uh, Spain and France crossed a million eventually um, after like the second or third week. Um, but uh, but not really opening weekend, it didn't. So um, this movie is struggling. <laughs> Russia, where Venom was really big. Um, this movie only made, uh, you know, about 600,000, I think, uh, opening weekend. And then whatever after that, like close to, I think it went over a million, but not much. Uh, whereas Venom, I think opening weekend made like 16 million. So it was huge. Uh, you know, Venom was huge in, in Russia, but this was not. Uh, n this movie did not find a, an audience, really, because at the end of it all, we're nearing $30 million for this movie. I mean, this movie it'll probably cross 30 million but it won't go much above that i doubt it'll hit 40 million uh, while it's in the box office uh, that's how bad this movie has done um which is not good it's not good at all and normally i don't wish ill on a movie but this movie i went and saw it with a non-resident evil friend uh my friend nate he's seen like one or two of the paul anderson movies but he has no idea about resident evil he just knows that i'm a huge fan and the way i talk about it he's like Dude, the way you speak about Resident Evil and the lore and and the and the what what you're you know attracts you to that universe and that story, like he's like none of that I felt like was represented in this movie at all, and that was coming from a guy who only knows Resident Evil mainly through hearing me talk about it, um, and uh, like I said, a little bit of he's seen of some footage of the games here and there, but that and then some movies, but that's it. Like he he's not a an actual fan of Resident Evil, and this did not convert him in any way. And so uh, so his feedback after the movie, I, I basically interviewed him after the movie. Like, what did you think of this? What do you think of that? And there was a couple of things he missed or, or, you know, to where I'm like, oh, I don't want to defend the movie. But here's what you missed in that scene that kind of answers that question. Um, but it doesn't it didn't make the movie better. It was just like he missed like a little character thing that someone said, but it didn't like enhance anything of the movie. And so I think now it's been the main you know feedback from this so far is that. Even hardcore fans, like even even people like me who are optimistic, came out of this disappointed. Um, and I'm sure there are some fans of you out there of this movie who genuinely like this movie, but you are in a deep minority. You are even in a, a, a more deep minority than the the you know previous movies, the Paul Anderson movies with Mila Jovovich. Like you're even you know a smaller percentage than that group, um, because those movies at least made money. This this budget, they say the budget's 25 million. I've seen conflicting reports. I've seen some people say 40 million, some people say 25. When I Google search it, it says 25 million. But the first articles that ever came out, you know, discussing this movie before the budget was released said 40 million. So it's really hard to tell. I remember, I think the very first Resident Evil movie with Paul W. Sanderson, I think that had a 40 ish million dollar budget. So that's why I thought maybe they'd do that again, you know, here. Um, and, and and who knows, maybe that's where people got those numbers from, but it's it's either 25 or 40 million. Either way, let's go with 25 to give them the benefit of the doubt. I think they probably spent more on this movie, even though you can't really tell by looking at the movie because it looks pretty cheap at some times. Some of the shots look really great. And, I, and I've seen people comment on the cinematography and say they liked it. Some of those shots of the uh, the mansion and the RPD looked really, really good because con considering there was no buildings there, uh, you know, just like a, a little entryway they built and they CGI'd the rest, some of those shots you cannot tell at all. So there was definite hard work and passion in some areas put into this movie, but I think in s some of the areas that matter most for people to notice uh, were not there, like the acting, um, the writing, and even some of the directing. Um, and definitely the story and the pacing and cramming three Resident Evil games into one movie, which 
that was my fear going into this was that that was going to be too much and it really really was because no characters felt like characters they felt like just extensions of their video game uh, uh counterparts with you know with even less character <laughs> somehow it was it's crazy this movie is is crazy when i even try to think about it again i'm like wow how this is really really bad on a lot of levels um so obviously i'm not the only one who feels that way because we can sit here and argue all day whether the movie is good or not um but really what you know the filmmakers and everyone what it comes down to is money and if this movie had a 25 million dollar budget let's just give it the benefit of the doubt and say it was 25 million um then these numbers are bad like really bad if it was 40 million these numbers would be worse not much worse but worse but let's say it's 25 million and they're about around that right now at <laughs> the domestic or the universal box office like the whole world is you know just past 25 million so as of right now like i said it would probably hit 30 but i don't know how much further than 30 it's going to get uh, this is really bad i know some people say hey well if it made 25 million that means it made its budget back no it didn't no it didn't at all because when you have a movie that costs about 25 million to make you usually spend another 15 or 20 to market the movie so that brings you up to 40 to 45 million dollars of close to 50. um so you're between 40 and 50 million now and then when the movies come out in the first weekends uh, the studio only gets about 50% of the profits that uh, is made from ticket sales. Um, and then after that, it drops significantly each week. So they made 25 million, you know, roughly. And so we could cut that in half um, and say they actually probably made uh, 12 and a, you know, 12 and a half million off ticket sales, um, but probably even less than that, because like I said, each week it drops. So you're looking at them probably only making about 10 million dollars 10 to 12 million dollars off of this movie so far to go back towards the 25 million and that's where i said i go maybe it would have been smart for them if the budget for this was 25 million and they have to market it maybe it would have been smart to sell this movie to netflix since they have a netflix deal they could have sold it to netflix for 30 million or something made a five million dollar profit that would at least guarantee them to make another one maybe you know um, or give them a better chance to make another one and then they could have released it on netflix and just got a bunch of people watching it on netflix and uh, and any money left over from that could go towards making another one it would have been a smarter business move to just put this on netflix uh and and this is uh, that's how bad this did in the theater uh, i think sony was really hoping against hope that this would have a good opening i think they were just on a high after venom to hope to get another uh, you know hit out there looks like they're gonna probably with spider-man but they're definitely not gonna with they're, they didn't with resident evil so anyway this is just a long ramble i did i just i figured i would just let my mind go wherever and i have these numbers here so um you know the movie's been out a couple weeks now and it's just it's bombed it's a full-on bomb and i would be very very surprised if they brought any of these actors back or this director to even think about making a sequel i think what they'll do is they'll see how the netflix show goes with the wesker show and see if that does anything or, or, or rejuvenates fan uh you know um appreciation or it gets fans back on their side i don't know if it will you know but again it's not just about fans if the wesker show just is a good show in general that pulls people in mass audience people then that could rejuvenate this uh, franchise but it would probably make them rethink where they go in the future with it so i think for right now no one's having any meetings about resident evil they're probably just waiting to see if another game gets announced or if the netflix show does well but i bet you everyone is just at a standstill now they're probably even rethinking elements of the netflix show right now because of how badly this movie has done and continues to do so let me know your thoughts down below you know do you think this is deserving this movie's deserving of that like i i know people worked really hard on this movie and i i don't want to say that people's like hard work you know didn't matter because that's not true you know at the end of the day this was this is something someone their work should be proud of like if they did sets or props or whatever like they should still be proud of their work but uh the person like i always say like uh, i got this from joel schumacher when a mo he said this after he made batman and robin he said if you like a movie it's everyone it's it's a it's a full you know um collaboration between me the crew the the cast everyone um that's you know that's who to thank is everybody he goes but if a movie's bad you have to blame the director and in that case joel schumacher is like i directed batman and robin people hate it i take full responsibility and i always thought that was very big of him to do and i have yet to see johannes roberts come out and say um you know what 
I, it was a misstep and I'm sorry to the fans that I, if I let you down, um, you know, I thought I was onto something like I have seen no comments from him. He just kind of went into a hole. I think probably Sony's like, Hey, nobody talk about this anymore. Uh, but I'll, I'll say this next time I see people who are in the movie and stuff and making the movie say, we're doing something for the fans. Uh, I am de definitely going to believe them a lot less <laughs> or be a lot more cautious, I should say. I like being optimistic, and there were some genuine things in the trailers that I thought were unique and interesting that I liked, but I still was afraid of cramming all that story into one movie. And this is proof, at least, you know, to me, the budget, again, you, you can disagree with me on all aspects of the movie that you want. But at the end of the day, it's the money and the money is what's going to keep it, the franchise going. And this is not enough money to keep this version of the franchise going. So uh, welcome to Raccoon City and goodbye Raccoon City, because I don't think we're going to get an extension of this universe at all. And part, I'm, I'm glad for that. And I hate to say that because, like I said, I know people worked hard on it, but I'm glad. I'm glad we are not going to get any more from this universe because uh, they would have announced it you know for sure but there's no reason to like this movie did abysmal numbers so anyway i've talked long enough uh, i thought I'd, i just rambled uh, this whole time so let me know what you think of all this of the budget uh, you know do you think the movie is deserving of that um like i said i i hate to say it but i'm i'm glad this movie did not do well i don't want to see any more movies and I, and that's something i rarely say is to wish something bad you know someone's art you know i wish it to not continue but uh, I don't want this to continue. Uh, to me, this was not art in in the sense, uh, and it was an art that I liked, I should say. Um, but it looks like I wasn't alone because word of mouth got out there and no one went to see this movie. We as fans need mass audiences to go to keep our you know things we love alive. And nobody went to resurrect this franchise at the theaters. So, uh, so yeah, so Sony, I, you know, I, lose Constantin Films and Constantin Films like I really wish you guys would give up the rights to Resident Evil to me you're 0 for 7 now and uh, and I do not look forward to anything else that says Resident Evil and Constantin Films together in Davis Films when I if I see those two if I see Constantin and Davis Films attached to the next Resident Evil thing I'm probably not even going to watch it now uh, you're 0 for 7 for me I, I shouldn't even give you this many chances uh, but it's just because I'm that much of a Resident Evil fan but um, but you're making me want to be less of a Resident Evil fan uh, because of how bad these movies have been. So um, anyway, thanks so much. Uh, episode 99 in the can now, and I will have episode 100 out to you guys probably close to, you know, like I said, after Christmas, between uh, then and New Year. Um, I'll try to get something out to you guys, and I'll just read your comments and, and get your feedback and then, uh, you know, respond to those comments, and, uh, and that'll be our final episode of Nemesis, you know, at least for a while. Like, who, who knows? Maybe they'll make a Resident Evil game, you know, next year or the year after um, that I can stream for you guys when it comes out as long as I'm feeling well so uh, if that if that is the case I would definitely do it so thanks so much for watching the show like share subscribe all that fun stuff and I actually don't subscribe <laughs> we're over 400 subscribers and there's no more new content coming most likely so don't worry about subscribing but hopefully you enjoyed this and uh, hopefully you enjoy the next episode as well thanks so much see you then peace